Hi, everyone. Um, I have to say I'm so, so, so excited to be here. Dustin and Katerina, you've done an incredible, incredible job. The space looks amazing. The, the, the attendees are incredibly excited. And I'm sure Alicia shares my thoughts in saying thank you and great job. So rather than pleasant. However, I do want to say, Katerina, I'm not five foot four. I am five foot oh. Yes, believe it. Um, so today, I'd like to talk about something that I've been excited about for a long time, but I've only started thinking about more and more um, recently, which is uh, sort of how to apply open hardware to education and how open hardware can make a difference in education. Looking back at how um, I started as being an engineer, one of the first projects that I learned, one of the first um, really concepts that I learned is, is this processor, the Z80. Um, I was in computer engineering um, uh, class, and it took us two semesters. This is, some of you know, one of the most cloned and known processors of all time. Um, it was the year 2000. It had already been obsolete. It took us two semesters. It was obscure. It was complex. It was sort of an all or nothing thing. If you missed one class, you were screwed. Um, and and it, was a really, it was a really sort of damaging experience for me that, that made me really think about how not to teach electronics. Um, so the, the, the idea of it being sort of obscure and complex and an all or nothing thing really raises two questions. Is that essentially what it did to this type of education is that it made it closed. You couldn't really easily access it. You couldn't easily access it. You couldn't easily pick it up from where you left off. It was also linear. So at any point you started, you had to have all the baggage that started before and that became, made it even more complex. So how do we look at education from sort of the opposite end? How do we make it open? How do we make it instead of linear? How do we make it modular so that you can grab uh, different modules and iterate on them and swap them out and, and try again? Thinking about sort of science and technology education, and I've been thinking a little bit about this, so this is sort of a high-level high thought, but I'd love to talk more about people about this. I've, I've sort of perceived two types of, of approaches to science and technology education. One approach is sort of more field-driven, more discipline-driven, where you are taught math, you are taught um, physics, you are taught chemistry, and they're looked at in the context of a discipline, and you know, each one is sort of this compartment. On the other side, you have the approach that is more tool-driven, that is supposedly the newer version, but essentially what it's doing is that it's attaching us very much to very specific tools. On one hand, the field-driven education, which is how I was taught, for example, feels out of touch, feels not modern. What you learn in physics class, what you learn in math class, you don't feel applies to your day-to-day -day life. You don't feel applies to the things that you use, that you buy, that you, um, that you interact with. It's also linear and closed in the way that I talked about it before. So it's an all or nothing approach. If you haven't taken you know, calculus one, you can't take calculus two, you can't take calculus three. And so everything becomes more and more elitist in some sense. And, and finally, this, this idea of being compartmentalized. So each discipline has its own little field. Physics is its own thing, chemistry is its own thing, and the same for all the other disciplines. And then you have this other trend of, uh, of teachers and schools that are starting to say, no, we want to teach tools that are modern. We want to teach education and science and technology. And so we're going to teach Excel, and we're going to teach Java programming, and we're going to teach you how to be in IT, and we're going to use iPads. But it's, it's sort of the, this is the approach of looking at it as a consumer. You know, not, not, you, you learn Excel now. Excel may not exist in 10 years. You're learning Java. It's, uh, Java may become obsolete. So it's not transferable. It's also not international. So it doesn't apply to different cultures all necessarily. So I started thinking about this sort of different approach of how to be instead of field driven and instead of, um, what was my other thing? Oh, tool driven, how to be fundamentals driven. So instead of focusing on sort of the tool, the product itself, or the discipline, really focusing on what are the ideas, how to teach people how to think. So programming, particularly object oriented programming, I find a really good way to do that, to teach problem solving, teach design thinking, and really start to take the concepts and make them more general. So if you're learning about motion, it doesn't have to be only in physics class. Maybe it's an art class. Maybe it's happening in, in your engineering class. Maybe it's happening in your debate class. It doesn't really matter. And added to that, the idea of making, it, making this education also open and modular, which is what I talked about a little bit earlier. 
there have been some approaches that have tried to look at education in this way, and so these are some of the biggest examples. Khan Academy and, and um, MIT Open Courseware uh, both have, have tried to make uh, education very open, created them into little modules, whether they're classes, whether they're little lessons. They're online. They have hundreds of thousands and millions of viewers and classes online. And I think this works really well and has really started to create a revolution. But how do we do it with hardware? So how, how do you apply this type of thinking when, in, um, when you're teaching sort of these types of um, questions like we talked about before, all you need is a computer, all you need is an internet connection. How do you teach hardware where you need to have the physical hardware in your hands, you need to be able to use it? So this is something that I've been thinking about for a while, actually four and a half years now, and is the, was sort of the genesis of, of little bits how we could create a common platform of hardware that becomes not about the tool itself, but the tool is just a vehicle for the layer on top of it that you use, which is education, which is art, which is um, creativity, problem solving, all sorts of different things. So it's not about the LED, it's about light, it's not about um, uh, the motor, it's about motion, it's about this layer on top of it that you can use to create things. Fast forward to um, four and a half years, Little Bits has now become a product. Uh, we have a library of about 35 different modules. Um, each bit has, I don't know if people are familiar with it, each bit has one specific function, light and sound and sensors, then they snap together with magnets. But the thing that I, 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 I think we really focus on always is to always take, go back to this idea of we're taking an interaction and making it into a brick. I, want, I, I don't know how I'm doing in time, so maybe there's no time to show this video. So um, one of the things that becomes really excited, exciting is when you give um, sort of a set of these, this platform um, to, to younger adults. I'm not allowed to say kids. Younger adults. Um, and so this is an example of, um, of a young girl uh, playing with, uh, with little bits and for the first time learning how to think about sort of the different modules of technology. Invention you have there? Uh, it's a turner, a light switch, and one thing, one thing that has a green button, and then another that connects to a fan that turns it on. I see. And they both work. See? And then this one. Perfect. Cool. But once you have to turn it on, you have to turn it on. Oops. And then you can turn it off Ugh, with that. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, turn it on. There. Uh -huh. Oh, I fit to it besides. That's why it did. So this is a much longer video, and, and if you're interested, you can go see it online. But for... For me, what's exciting is that this idea that she's starting to think about uh, these different pieces of electronics as blocks and starting to learn how they interact with each other, and she grabs them and iterates with them and, and starts again, and I think this is something that's applicable to much more sort of abstract concepts. So, this is an example of a pulse module, for example, where you're trying to um, illustrate the idea of frequency and how frequency can change. Another example of an AND gate, so really starting to think of the basic fundamentals of programming. Only when the button is pushed and the uh, roller switch is pressed do you get an output. So this idea that yes, you're teaching programming, but it's not tied to um, a particular language that may or may not become obsolete and you're not going to get out of there and really sort of feel lost. It's the fundamentals of the way you think. Again, an inverter, which is an example of another one of these logic gates. So basically, really, what we're trying to do is, is erase, erase the tool, just focus on the way people think, and focus and really create the mechanism to do that. And what we're trying to do also is 
take the idea of open and, and actually apply it. So uh, we started the place on the website where people can, uh, can put up lesson plans and projects that they have did so that you can start to learn from each other. Teachers don't typically, uh, typically, don't typically share what their curriculum. They don't typically share their lesson plans. And I think this is something that the open hardware community can help them do. We can start to think, you know what, you're going to be learning from teachers from other schools, other programs. Uh, people that are in after-school programs that may not have a PhD degree, may, uh, may not have a master's degree, but this is something that's really fundamental to learning in general. So here's an example of, for exa of, of teaching, for instance, motion. It could happen in art class, it could happen in physics class, it could happen in, in, in sort of a making class, and it really sort of just thinks about the fundamentals. And then finally, this idea of making it accessible for people to become teachers even when they're not. So we have a page on the website called Dream Bits where you put ideas of things that you want to make. Maybe you get excited in the beginning. If people get excited about it, you start to want to learn how to do it. This is not something closed. It's not only for experts. It's not, you don't have to sort of go down this path and you can be a teacher for a period of time and maybe not. And so these are ideas that we're sort of thinking about and starting to think that the things that we learn in open hardware, if we want to make them go mass, if we want to make them really impact society, we should start at an early age. It's something that we're trying. It's difficult. It's going against decades of, of the way education has been done, but maybe it can happen. And so we're looking, this is the very beginnings of it, and so hopefully people are interested and can help us think about it. Thank you.